What's going on y'all? Rob Anderson, Clean Power Wash, Salisbury, Maryland. Um, I made this video before and unfortunately I don't have a big gulp with me right now. Um, but we're going to talk about installing bulkheads. Um, I am currently sitting on top of a 330 gallon tote. Um, we went with totes for this current box truck build um, because it would give us, quite frankly, just a little bit more water. I uh, wanted to see if it could help us balance out the weight a little bit better, reduce some of the sloshing, um, and save a little bit of space, make that space a bit more functional since we'll have a fully level spot. Um, so what do you need in order to install a bulkhead? Well, you're going to need your bulkhead. Take a look like this, like this. It's got the little rubber gasket there. This one has a black rubber gasket. And this one. Um, guys, I highly, highly, highly recommend. Uh, so this one's a half inch. Uh, I believe both of these other two are one inch. Um, you're going to want to have some of different sizes. Either that or you're going to have to have all the adapters and everything. For your pickup tubes and stuff, you're going to want to have a half inch. Uh, for your bypass lines, it does not matter. Um, you can literally have it just shoot out of the bottom of this. I would recommend to put either a nipple or something on there or hose barb or whatever. Um, so you're going to need that. You need a hole saw. Now, to size the hole saw, it should be able to fit the threaded portion inside of it. Just barely. Obviously, the outside edge of this is bigger around there right there. Um, and then... If you don't have a big gulp, you got a funnel, put some tape on it, get the job done. Now, placement. So we're gonna stop looking at me for a moment and we'll look at my hands. So we've got our IBC toad here. Um, up front, there we go. There we go, all right. So up front here, um, we're gonna see where my hands are pointing is where the actual outlet is. I don't want to do smack dab above there. I can do over here, over here. I can do my um, my fill kind of close up here in this front corner. You obviously need to make it somewhere so that when you put your arm in, you can touch there. You can see where your hand is. Why do you need to be able to do that? So when you drill your hole for this, So that I can catch all the debris. Last thing we want is to cut this hole here. All right. So cut this hole. See that here. What well, we're gonna do one. I want to knock all those plastic shavings away from it. You can even take your... unit there. And see now inside here, I have a whole bunch of plastic shavings. Every one of those could get into my check valve, could get into my filter, and cause issues. Um, go ahead and pull this little chunk out. Now, um, we're ultimately going to be putting a Hudson flip valve on this right now. I'm just going to show you how to thread this on here. Um, they are reverse threaded, so righty loosey. Now, depending on where you're having this set up, you want to have that rubber gasket to be able to seal it, but this is basically going to just go right into the top and make sure that you don't lose the piece and actually we'll flip that around and make that even easier. So my hand inside there, that's it. Let's start it on nice and easy. Um, it is also helpful if you actually have it inverted like that. 
because what you can do is you can go ahead and put your pipe on there. Um, you can go ahead and put your um, Hudson float valve or if it's a pickup tube or whatever you're putting in there. You can go ahead and be threaded on there. You can hold it better underneath, thread that on. And then all I have to do now is put on a hose barb um, or whatever other adapters so that we can then run it to our garden hose. Uh, for the other pickup spots, we'll probably do something around here. And then I'll probably come over here right about where the drill is. Or I can even do it in this front right corner for our bypass. A um, couple things when you're setting those up. Your fill can be wherever. It really does not matter. Your pickup, you need it in a spot that's not going to be turbulent. You don't want to set it right in the middle. You don't want to set it um, near where you're actually, the water's flowing out because that can cause some issues. Um, you want to put it somewhere so that um, it's able to pick up the water without any additional nonsense going on. Um, so we'll, quite frankly, as long as we don't have to worry about it picking up something, I'm probably going to put it, again, about midway back here. It can be a little bit lower down, and that is something to consider, too, with your Hudson float valve. You don't want to put that, you can see on here, this area right here is lower than right here and right here. It's just a little bit, it's only about two inches, but every inch matters. That could be the difference between another 10 to 15 gallons of water in your tank. So you want to make sure that you position it in the high enough, highest spot in there um, so that you get the most water in your tank. Uh, for the pickup tubes, find a spot. Go ahead and take your tube, whatever you're going to use for your pickup tube, and run that in. See, especially if you're going to be running a proportioner or whatever other mixing system, um, make sure that you've got your... Um, slotted PVC filter at the bottom of that. That will save you so much time and hassle in the future. Um, if you've got your bypass line for your unloader coming through here, um, one thing for winter time, I know I'm making this video basically uh, into March, early April. Uh, hold up. Sorry about that. Timer went out on the batteries, uh, on the, the lights in the truck. But, um, yeah, you, you just want to make sure that again, when you're when you're putting this all together, you think about these few things. Make sure that your plumbing is set up right um, for these tanks, for your bypass line. Sorry, that's what I was saying. Um, I will a lot of times either put a quick connect either at the top of this or at the bottom. Uh, usually, it's your unloader is a good spot to have it, just because that way, what you can do is you can unhook it off that unloader, drain out the water out of the top of that. If on your inside of the unloader, so this is the bottom of the tank, you've got PVC pipe coming down here, it can venturi and suck the water out your bypass line, or you can keep water in there. Um, all you really have to do is have it come out six, 12 inches, or it can even just be a, a hose barb 90 coming off of it. Um, some people worry about if the jet is shooting straight down with your bypass line into the tank that that could cause all kinds of bubbles and cavitation um yes that's possible especially if you're running low on water to begin with um, but if you're not already running low on water it really shouldn't be an issue um, you should be able to go ahead and um you know set your bypass to bypass quite frankly anywhere i wouldn't shoot it straight over your tank but what a lot of people will do when they put that hose barb that's pointing it, if you point it towards the side, it smacks the side of your tank and then it goes straight down off that wall. There's not going to be any extra bubbles. I've seen guys too that have set up a bulkhead in the bottom of the tank um, as a way to avoid air bubbles as well. It certainly works. That can be very, very tricky. Um, I don't know about you guys, but my arms are not six feet long to, uh, or four feet long, quite frankly, to, reach to the bottom of this tank and do it um, or any other alternative methods that you can use. So anyways, I hope that helps. I know this went a little bit longer, but uh, for installing bulkheads, installing whatever fittings, things into the top of your tanks, that's how I would recommend it. Again, this just a, you know, your regular 32 ounce, you, you go to the movies, take your cup with you. So.
See ya.